one. So this module is from Leicester University School of Archaeological Studies. And it was a very useful module when I did it back in the day. And I thought, right, let's share this with you. So I'm going to get these as big as pos on, on the phone. That, that's a bit big. Um, that's, that's a bit more like it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Too much. Good. That's, that's nice, isn't it? That's, that's, that's pretty good. So introduction. So maps are an essential massively essential requirement for anyone studying archaeology, studying the landscape. Maps are massive. What are you going to do without being able to read a map? Is it longitude or latitude? You've done a really good job, Anne, of writing down the grid references of a thousand sites on your Ordnance Survey map, which is not what I wanted to do. Longitude before latitude. I do believe you've done it the wrong way around, but it doesn't matter. But you, you've started the process. So maps themselves come in all shapes and sizes, not just the ones that you've used, but all shapes and sizes. And that's what we're going to look at a little bit about next week, as well as a few other things. And not only coming in lots of shapes and sizes, can deal with a variety of different things. From tithe maps, to modern ordnance survey maps, to estate maps, to medieval maps, to Roman maps. To, to maps that show X marks the spot, loads of different maps. They can inform one about the geology of a region, display the physical layout of the landscape, explain its present communication system. You know, where all the roads are, you know? That's good. Um, show the pattern of settlement at a variety of different scales. Well, you've got a good scale. This is one to 25,000 scale map, the one that you've got in front of you but not the one in front of you on the screen. Uh, these, in, some maps can indicate place names, nature, location of industry, and so on, and so on, and so on. Almost all maps will be relevant to landscape study. There are no maps that are not relevant, other than maps that are blank. What we're trying to say is people created maps in the past for a reason, and they've got all that detail on it. it it's got all that information we need on those maps. You know, everything to do with history and archaeology is always relevant, no matter what it is. Um, even people who lie about the past and, and they're getting their information from somewhere. But we're talking about maps. The purpose of what we're doing today will concentrate on the way in which maps of all periods, well, most periods, because we've got to leave a bit for next week, can assist the process of historical and archaeological analysis of early landscapes. Brilliant. Maps and site history. One of the most obvious ways in which a map assists a field walker, we did field walking last week, is to show a landscape or a particular site within it as it was at the time the map was made. So you're wandering across a field, you don't know what was done in that field, but the map itself that you've got was produced in the 1870s and it shows that there was medieval remains on that map. So using that map with a modern map, you can indicate that some of the medieval pottery that you're finding in that field will relate to the map that you're looking at in the medieval village. So this map itself um, is a map, a part of a map, okay, from 1927. Um, this is actually of um, a site at Longham in Norfolk, East Anglia. You don't really need to know where precisely these are in Britain. This is an exercise to demonstrate the value of maps, not necessarily which parts of Britain the map we're using are actually from. So to be honest with you, it would be good to know the map name that you're using today, but I want to know what's, what you're finding, your ability to find things. So this map itself, um, this, is, this is our first map. This is from 1927, taken from an Ordnance Survey map of one to 2,500 scale. The map you, you, that you've been looking at, other than Pam, is not one to 2,500 scale, is one to 25,000 scale. So obviously this map has got more detail than the map that you've been looking at this week. Published in 1927, shows a moated site in Norfolk. So it shows 
something on the map, a moated site. So what we're next going to do is compare this with a map from, this is a map itself from the 1500s. This looks very different, doesn't it? We go back, go on quickly. So we look at that. And so this is from 1927. So this is the map from the 1500s of the same landscape. This shows a representation of what the landscape looked like in the 1500s from a map from the 1500s. And this is taken from an estate map. Again, another word, not ordnance survey map, an estate map from the 1500s, which indicates precisely what the place looked like at that time. One can see the manor house in the, in the middle with its moat. Very important when you look at maps in Sussex. Lots of sites, medieval sites, have got moats around them. The bridge across the moat. So let's get my little bit of annotation in there. And if we don't get through everything that I've got planned today, it doesn't matter, we'll do a bit next week. So there you go, you've got the moat there and you've got the nice little bit of a bridge across the moat. And the outer enclosure, so um, what you've got, this is classed as the outer enclosure, right? It's very irregular, but this is the outer enclosure. So what you can see is a few ponds, Nice, good there indicated. And then you've also got this queer little building over your dovecote and barns. There you go, lots of barns. It's a really, really nice demonstration of the landscape. So if we clear all this and we go back to my mouse. So again, this is very different, isn't it? So this, this map itself, um, this map, this map itself represents the medieval situation, which nobody recorded back in the day. And it goes far to explaining what a site um, such as this looked like back in the day. Okay, so this is, this is really important. Um, however, this map, it, this map itself, um, double check the number on this one, right? So, that's what it that's what it looked like um and when when we actually i just got to double check on something right uh this this itself so we go back to this that's what we feel that medieval site looked like uh, from the 1500s and then we go to this one uh, this is another map of another area croydon again another type of map i want to show you lots of different maps as well so this shows you the situation in an ancient historical monuments book, showing you the situation, the medieval situation of a medieval site as drawn probably in the beginning of the 1900s. So again, this is an archeological map sort of indicating a few nice things in there, nice bit of a scale. Again, three different types of maps straight away, straight into the deep end. So again, there's lots of maps to show you what, what the landscape is like today. And we don't only get maps from Britain, we get maps from various different parts of the world. Um, and, you know, it's always said that um, maps from Britain are some of the best maps on the planet. But what we do have from this example is a map of the landscape of Macau, Portuguese landscape of Macau from the 1800s, late 1800s. So as we know, the Portuguese were in Macau and look how detailed that is. You know, you've got a nice defended site in the middle. You've got all the street pa patterns. You've got, you've got the surrounding landscape around it. And you really start to get an idea what this landscape was like uh, in regards to Macau in the late 1800s. It shows considerable detail. You don't often, when, when you look at maps of foreign countries, you, you think of them not being really detailed, but they, they sometimes unusually are. You know, we're not the be all and end all in map making in Great Britain. Lots of other countries made great maps like the Portuguese and the Spanish and the Americans. This is an example of their colony in the late 1800s. So showing considerable detail and detail that is no longer with us today. So lots of what we once knew about this landscape of Macau, 
130 odd years later is gone, it's been swept away. So getting an idea of the landscape from old maps helps historians and archeologists understand changes in landscape use. Maps are of course invaluable. They are very much invaluable uh, in enabling ancient sites to be discovered. Now, this is a really good example. You know, I, I used to like bringing maps from the 1600s, uh, you know, the old speed maps into my classes from the 1600s, you know, copies, of course. Um, and I used, to, I used to like to say, try and spot the medieval villages. Go and look at, try and find the medieval villages um, from these maps of the 1600s. Um, and this, this figure itself is the landscape of Rutland, Leicestershire. And this is, this is a rather interesting map, even though this is from the 1600s. Being produced in the 1600s, it actually records villages that no longer exist. So what you need to do is go to the table at the bottom and we'll have a look at this. So if we, if we go to this map of Rutland from the 1600s, it's described, you know, you don't get massively detailed maps from the 1600s. You don't get field boundaries and all the roads and everything on them. So this is as detailed as you're going to get from the 1600s. So what you're looking at quite nicely is if you, if you look, these things here are the deer parks of the 1600s. Everyone had deer parks. Okay. Um, and then you've got um, the major towns shown. Here we go, these major towns shown on the map. So that's really, really helpful. Um, and then it shows the lesser settlements, like these ones. See all these lesser settlements. But what are these? What are these things here? Um, and we're gonna work out what these things are because of this little table of Rutland, great. Actually, you can get copies of these maps of Glamorgan, Gwent, all the way around Britain from the 1600s, right? And they're all like this. They all tell you about the landscape as it was and all those missing medieval villages. But what we do have is back in the 1600s, the official language of the day is still Latin. So a little bit of knowledge of Latin is useful. So that table there, up in the right hand corner, there it is. What we're going to do, we're going to go down to the bottom of the screen. Oh God, that's not good. We're going to go down to the bottom of the screen. Uh, we're going to work out what this means. There you go. They've all got these charts on them. They're great. So even though this is in Latin, the text tells us that market towns, here we go, that the market towns are shown by means of a small map. So, ooh, hang on, let's get, let's get back up again. So we know, we know that on these, these, we've got, these are the market towns, these are the big ones, as I've mentioned. Okay, so there we go. But then we go down to the bottom of the table and we've got what all these little things mean here. Um, so here we go. So where there's a church, where there's a church, these are the smaller places. These are the small little villages that exist today. There you go. The small churches. Um, and then when you've got the much smaller villages, the, the very, very much uh, smaller villages, um, which actually have been deserted, are shown with a circle and a square image above the top. Um, a circle with a church. And then you've got these other deserted settlements and circles. So these, these maps are, are massively important. So a circle is used to indicate uh, country seats, loca, devastata, olim, ville. This symbol was therefore being used to indicate the sites of devastated or abandoned places. Now, this is really interesting uh, because this map in the 1600s is indicating villages and abandoned places that are no, no longer used. You know, they're there. They, in folk memory, we knew, know, for example, that 
if we go over there, we know that there was once a village here, okay, and once a village here. And look at that then, Grantbury, there was once a village here. And look at that village there, I think that's El Elf Thorpe. Look at that village. So year, in years later, years later, this is, this is why this is important. In years later, these villages that are indicated by the arrows, in, from the point of view of the 1800s, late 1800s, these are no longer on the maps. They're gone. Okay? Just a few humps on the bot, hum, just a few humps and bumps on the map. And if the Ordnance Survey have been kind to us, they might mark these on the maps. But in lots of cases, they've been erased from the maps. So they are gone. But when archaeologists come across, when they look at these and they say, right, we, we, we find in these villages. So in other words, they're not new discoveries. They've been rediscovered. So when the archaeologists say, right, what we're going to do, we're going to, going to look for this village. There you go. I think that's Calthorpe. We're going to look for that village. Um, they go on the ground. They've got a map with them. They field walk. They've, they, they've worked out the name of that village in that area. They've field walked. They're not discovering something new. They're rediscovering it because this was already on the maps in the 1600s. That is the point. That's an important point. So in lots, in many ways, archaeologists are rediscovering archaeology from maps. Um, not actually discovering it completely anew. Now this is this is a rather um, interesting map. So if we um, if we zoom in a little bit, so we do that there. Oh, too much, too big, too big, much too much. That's known as Fragthorpe. Fragthorpe. Now. I've been moving a bit fast through my map, so I've got to catch up. So this is um, a site known as um, Kenton in Rutland, Leicestershire again. Um, we're doing a lot of sites in Leicestershire simply because that's where, my, that's where Leicester University is based. But again, everything that we're seeing has parallels with maps in Bridgend, Mystag, Cardiff and so on. So this itself provides another example. This shows um, a small portion. Uh, this shows a small portion of an enclosure map redrawn from 1769. Now, this now enclosure maps of 1769, they they are some of the very early surviving maps that we've got around today. There's lots of maps before that, but lots of the enclosure maps survive. And if you're looking at this, this is rather interesting. The enclosure map shows fields. So these are the field boundaries. So these are all the nice field boundaries. There you go. Um, but it shows no houses, but it actually shows the word Fragthorpe. Fragthorpe. Now, if we had have had a bit more time, we could have looked at that other map and we could have found Fragthorpe on it. Um, and those bold letters are written over this, this um, enclosure map from 1769. So, but it, a visit to this part of the parish, which has been under the plough for a long time, led to the discovery of a very denuded earthwork on one side of the track, running to the village of Easton on the hill. So what we've got, hang on, we get rid of that there. Let's just um, make sure I get rid of all those arrows. Let's uh, zoom in back there. Oop, oops a daisy. So we go up there, oop, hang on, too big. There we go. So what we've got, they went to the village, right? So. Um, they, they went and did a survey in the village. So what we've got, um, if, you're, if you're looking at this, you can see, if we want to do a bit of a comparison, there's that boundary there and there's that boundary there. So what the archaeologists have done, they've gone to the site and they've actually redrawn the landscape to what it looks like today. And what it looks like today, 
what was being indicated in 1769 was in fact these here represented these and they're actually still on the ground today but what has changed is what's south of this boundary these have almost gone but we know that this is Thregthorpe and this village has been rediscovered all thanks to looking at old maps if it wasn't for the maps maybe the archaeologists may never have found this maybe they might be still looking for it we've got something very exciting now this is a very odd one very exciting this one let's get a bit excited with what we're doing we're now in Northamptonshire and interestingly enough um, I've also got a qualification involving Northamptonshire as well that's where I got my A level A level in archaeology so uh, this site is known this landscape is known as High Ferrers Castle Northamptonshire and what we've got we've got um, a, a photograph in the top and at the bottom we've got if we move that up there let's just um, try and what we've got in the bottom is these little maps so what you can see at the top are these earthworks today and let's read what we've got on this one rather exciting in addition maps can very quickly and easily explain what a site actually was so in other words you've got a map on the left from 1591 1789 and 1885 we'll be doing a little bit of comparison next week that'll be great looking forward to it uh, so we'll do the comparison in a moment so you've got the photograph above and that clearly looks like a castle doesn't it it looks like the the earthworks of a castle definitely definitely this bank has a rectangular plan and a deep ditch and its outer side has traditionally been regarded as the site of, of the castle of high ferrers well there you go it's marked on the map it has to be the castle mustn't it there you go from a from a map of 1885 that there has to be the castle because it says it on the map you know where we're going to go with this by the looks of it now anyway so basically what the archaeologists have done or antiquarians they've said right those earthworks look like a castle and guess what it's marked on the map of a, as a castle brilliant lovely however however when we we can see the detail from the 1885 map and the earthwork is confidently marked as the site of High Ferrer's Castle. And on the basis of what's being said on the map and the photograph, this was designated as a scheduled ancient monument, protected under the Ancient Monuments Act. So that there on the right, as marked on the 1885 map, because it says it is a castle, right? It is a castle. But we're going to find out something different, aren't we, Bill? Because not always on a map is what is actually there. In the 1800s, late 1800s, we used to find um, we used to find descriptions on maps that used to say, "This is a, a Roman um, castle, right?" Um, and the first thing is, the Romans didn't do castles, right? Um, and the Ordnance Survey used to go nuts at one stage. Everything on our landscape, bit of an exaggeration, everything that were banks and ditches, including medieval villages, were Roman sites. Um, and then people would go along those, to those sites in the, like, the 1920s. And because it's on the map as marked as Roman, they would be continually thought as being Roman. But then archaeologists come along and say, actually, it was marked wrongly on the map. So in 1885, Castle site of is thought to be gospel, but it might not be. And the strange thing is, if this is the remains of a castle, why is the moat rectangular? Now, this isn't a moated site. You don't find square, many square 
very large square castles in this country. There are one or two, but not many. Um, and you've got the right angle. And archaeologists started to think that there was something not quite right. But nobody really questioned it. They thought, right, earthworks, it's square, it's an unusual castle. So these doubts can be then resolved completely. And the true nature of the site understood with reference to earlier maps. So what we're going to do is, I think it, I think we know if we if we zoom out a little bit so i can give you a bit more detail that'll be a bit more useful i think we can see it all there now that's better so the doubts over whether this is a castle or not will now be resolved so we go to 1591 1789 and 1885 the map extract on the left-hand side shows Hyam Ferris in 1591. You will see that the north of the church, there you go, and there's the church, and this has been truncated, so there's the church. North of the church is irregular ground. Rather interesting stuff. So if that's the north of the church, and that's the north of the church, and back in 1591 there is the castle, why is the castle slightly much further north? You'll see that the north of the church of irregular ground is actually where the castle was marked as being in 1591. The area where the earthwork now is, so there you go, fish ponds, fish ponds. That is a fish pond. In 1789, the map reproduced in the central portion right, map produ reproduced in the central portion, was drawn, the area we are concerned with had a different appearance. So what you're talking about is that if we move all this away, that is where the castle was, and that's where they marked the castle, rightly in 1789. But some bright spark in 1885, didn't understand what this word meant. What's a coney, Bill? Bill's not with us. What's a coney, Jessica? I'm not sure. A rabbit. It's a rabbit. A wabbit. A coney is a wabbit. Now, let's go through this. The area we are concerned with had a different appearance in 1789. Our regular right angled moat has been brought into being and the whole area is marked as Coney Garth. In other words, it is a rabbit warren. So in other words, what they've done, what, in other words, a translation of what they've done is that in 1591, that's where the castle was. In 1789, the castle had been removed and there's no castle there in 1885. In 1591, these were fish ponds associated with the castle. With the castle removed, these fish ponds were turned into a large rabbit warren. Unfortunately, because it was misinterpreted, the fish ponds were converted on the map as being castle grounds. The error the answer to the error will come as follows. We know from various manorial documents going with, a, with the administration of the vast estates controlled by um, the Harem Ferris landscape that the castle had attached to it both fish ponds and also a rabbit warren. 
It looks therefore as if the site we are dealing with was one of the appendages of the castle. So today, where they think the castle was, is in fact the fish ponds and the place of the rabbit warren, rather than the castle itself. And under what went a certain degree of change between 1591 and 1789. The real site, so if we get rid of those arrows, the real site of High Ferrer's castle lay immediately to the north of the church. That's the castle. And has been totally removed. Norden's map shows this process actually taking place. In other words, what's happening is the castle is being demolished. These indicate piles of stone from the castle. The castle's been demolished and they piled the stone up. So the process of de demolishing the castle is shown on the map in 1591. When the stone was being carted away to build an Elizabethan manor, uh, Elizabethan mansion at Kim Bolton, some miles away to the east in Huntingdonshire. Today there are no traces whatsoever of the castle, and the site is occupied by a set of almshouses. So this is um, probably not classed as almshouses today, so these, these, are, these are those almshouses they're referring to. Uh, I think there's some remains of them there as well. Only the, the manorial appendages remain, the fish ponds, the earthwork of the rabbit warren, and the rather um, fine stone dovecote. So the dovecote is somewhere in this field. I think it's probably that building there. Um, so what we've got Maps can really help us understand the landscape and understand the changes and understand why sometimes archaeologists, historians, map makers can actually be wrong. Hopefully that's been of, of use to us all. Let's move on. Oh, look at this. This is something different again. Very different. Now, we actually go to Northamptonshire again, a site known as Norfolk. Um, and strangely enough, um, this is from um, Thomas um, Ears' map of the county, put together around 1750. So this is um, a facimile copy of a map put together in 1750. There's quite a bit of detail on there, actually. What you can see is this strange thing here. You can see roads, houses, and what the hell is this? We don't know what this is, really, from the 1750s. Immediately to the north of the village is a cogwheel looking thing. And you could think, you could put a guess of what this is. It's a, it might, the archaeologists from this map think, without looking at a modern map, that this is the village mill. And actually, this is the stream. And this is a leet. Well, we come to understand that now, actually. But it's a rather interesting landscape. So... If we look at what this is and this, if we greatly zoom in on this map down below, this is a very much enhanced map. Lovely, isn't it? So here we go. What you've got looking at the modern landscape with the, these, um, let's, let's just do a little bit of map language with you all. Uh, people. And I've just got to get something else in front of me. Map language. Uh, for you, those who want to learn a bit more about maps, these are called Houcher lines. And what we'll do, we'll zoom in on a Houcher. I want us to get as much as possible out of this. So if we don't do all this this week, we'll do it next week. A Houcher line 
uh, and I will describe this. So if we, uh, like, there we go. So get my arrows in. Um, uh, how, the, where you've got this dot thing at the top, that's the top, top of the bank. Where you've got the narrow line, that's the base of the bank. So in fact, this is a ridge. And therefore, what you can discern from this map is that with this being raised and that being raised, this here must be some sort of ditch. And this hollow, thing hollow over way. here, what's that, Bill? A hollow way, possibly. Ah, Bill, you jumped in too soon. You jumped in too soon. I'll tell you why you jumped in too soon. You would be right usually, Bill. You would be very right usually, but on this one, it's slightly something else. So, you know, we go back to the, you know, we go back to there. They think it's a mill and this is a stream. So if you go up that there and what we'll do is you, here you will see, let's get my arrows in here. This itself is a bank for what's known as elite. Elite itself is a water course that's been channeled off the main stream or river to give a race of water for this building, which is a mill bill. This is where the mill is. It says here, it took water from the river to the north to feed the site of the mill, which can be seen lying halfway along it with the letter M. This has been identified as the mill itself. The earthworks of the village at Northorpe can be seen to the east. So if we, if we sort of move on to something else now. And look at those earthworks. It's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. What, what we can de de determine from the landscape with various different types of, of survey. Um, so you've got all these earthworks. Um, and it's saying that, um, it's saying, for example, that these here, if we get the arrows in, this is showing a complete village. These here are platforms for houses. And this is actually a plot for a house. These are all individual plots for houses, all of these. And, and a large amount of the landscape was damaged in the 1820s to landscape, um, landscape the area into a park for his newly constructed country house. So back before the 1820s, it's very likely that these earthworks were very visible. Today, they're only slightly visible. And most of them are not even going to be marked on an ordnance survey map. Um, and the reason why they're not going to be marked on an ordnance survey map is that the ordnance survey have a rule of thumb. If an earthwork is under half a meter, they don't record it. So the other, the other thing that we will be looking at is another point. Now, when the person was creating this, this map up here, um, Thomas Ears map in 1750, they were told to mark just the buildings in the landscape today, not ruined buildings. This is why none of the medieval landscape is on this earlier map, except for, an in, for probably, probably the walls of this building were so impressive in the 1740s that the map maker decided to mark it on the map, or even better, the mill was still working in the 1750s. Interesting stuff there. So what we're going to do now is move on a little bit more to this landscape. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. Maps are also useful in showing features of the landscape which have now disappeared and which are totally um, unrecoverable 
um, when archaeologists are wandering across the landscape. There's no humps and bumps. That it's just being ploughed. This is a detailed map of the earthworks visible at a place known as Chellington in Bedfordshire. We go to the south of the country. So um, what I'm going to need is my copy of the map in front of me. This is not exactly that clear. So we go to the top. So what this map shows us is a church, which is there, and also Hill Farm, which is there. And in between this entire landscape are earthworks, groups of buildings. Look at all this. It's great, isn't it? Look at all this. It's lovely stuff. The earthworks, the earthwork plan can be compared with a pair of detailed open field maps of the 1700s, which show the parish at this time. These maps show not just the layout of the field system and the historical landscape, but also the individual houses still remaining. So in other words, from old maps, we can learn things that we're unable to understand today. Let's move on again. You know, it's great having these, these earthwork maps. Um, I just want to explain another little bit of detail whilst we're at it. Um, these indicate the medieval tithe system. So with the medieval tithe system, um, you would have um, the, way it, the way it would work out is say there are um, 10 um, domestic houses in the village. So what would happen is that each house each set of residents would have a ridge and furrow. So that would be houses A ridge and furrow, houses B ridge and furrow, houses C ridge and furrow, and so on. And so the land was equally divided in quality of land. So basically, maybe that bit of land that I've just indicated is a good plough land. Then what they would divide is the landscape again. So how house A would have a ridge and furrow here, House B, and House C, and so on and so on. So in other words, the whole point of the ridge and furrow system was that people had an equal proportion of the good plough land and the bad plough land. So there could be no arguments. You can imagine Bill from Moisteg, he gets the best land over there, but Carl from Barry, he has the bad, worst land over here. So what we do, everyone has a bit of that field of Bill's. It's not Bill field at all, but give you an idea and everyone has a bit of the land that I've just described to give everyone an equal proportion. Clear again and let's move on. This is a rather interesting landscape. How surveyors can get things wrong. Bill are you still with me on the screen? Of course, yeah. yeah good good good. I'm not here. Yeah, Bill, you know, have you ever looked at a map and it's shown something and it's not there? Regularly on my rambles, Carl, uh -huh. I come across something. I look yes. the map, they say, oh, no, sir, we got it wrong. Yeah, it's, but what, what they show, it doesn't exist. Or it, it exists in a different way. Oh, that, that's what Can I we... want. It exists in a different way. So if we keep with that, that's what I wanted. Right, so this, this is a rather interesting problem. As Bill's just described, I've, I've seen it as well. Unlike aerial photographs, which show what is actually there, but you can't take an aerial photograph of a medieval landscape because planes weren't invented um, until, the, uh, until the Wright brothers, okay? So you can't photograph an actual real medieval landscape in the 1400s because we didn't have planes back then. And unfortunately, time travel hasn't been invented yet. Um, so this is the problem. What we've got at the top there, that's a conventional ordnance survey map of a site known as Wood Walton Castle in Cambridgeshire. We've gone to Cambridgeshire now, that's great. Um, so what the, surveyor, what the surveyor has done, somebody said that there's a castle there. So what, what he's done, he's made it look like a castle. So um, what he's done, he's basically, or she, there are female surveyors as well, so he's indicated that there's all these sort of houches. They're not actually houches, actually. 
because they're not, we don't really know what these are. But to me, that looks like a set of earthworks. It looks like an incredible set of earthworks with a castle on the top. Brilliant, excellent, brilliant. However, what is actually there on the ground is something completely different. So let's go back to this. That to me indicates that there's a large moat and a, it's a moat and bailey castle. Castle on top of a big moat. That's what that, that looks like to me. Totally dominating the relative low Fenland. However, with detailed survey, that is in fact completely wrong because it actually looks like this. There's actually a hole in the ground in the middle and I've come across a site like this. There's a hole in the ground where the moat may or may not have been. So what's happened is that the surveyor presumed what the landscape looked like. And what is actually on the site, uh, if we, if we want to draw these, if we want to, we know what houches are now, right? What is actually on the site is you can see from a modern survey, um, from a non-ordnance survey survey, an archaeological survey, that the houcher lines actually go downwards. So there's the top. When in fact the other map showed that the top was in the middle. So that was completely wrong. Stone are crows. So there's actually a depression in the middle where the earlier surveyor had actually shown a bank, which is completely wrong. But and we know that... Um, but there are similarities in the map, which we are actually going to do. So if we get rid of those things there, there are similarities in the map. But what you can say with the similarities in the map, if I sort of zoom in a little bit, not too much. Uh, OK, if we put this on the side, it would be better. There you go. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Now, we know that the surveyor has actually exaggerated it and got things wrong. And we know, not, we know that things haven't really massively changed because that there shows that. That there shows that. So in other words, what we're seeing is the same thing, but interpreted in two completely different ways. Are you confused yet? What I'm trying to get at with all of this is that maps are massively useful. I've always loved maps. And you know what? Next to lying in bed with a beautiful woman, Bill, is a map. And I'm sure you will agree. <laughs> yes, explore. explore. Because, because explore. Of, exactly, explore the landscape with a map. And I tell you what, jokes aside, I know lots of people who really love maps. Um, I tell you what, if you, had, um, if you had map porn, I've heard that before, map porn. Uh, people just, I, I've had maps, right? And I've looked over maps for hours, right? I love them. So what we need to do now is look at the next thing. And I've, um, oh shit, time, right, okay. Everybody, have we got a little bit more than we usually have tonight, yeah? Good. Time-wise. So I, I tell you what, if we go, if we go probably go up to nine o'clock, is that okay? For me, it is, yeah. Right, yeah. so if, it's, yeah, if that's okay with everybody, I want to do to nine o'clock because I want to give you more of the lesson. And what I want to do is um, sort of, I want you to have your bit because I've asked you to do some homework and I want you all to do your bit. So I'm not going to complete the full lecture today because I don't want to rush it. So understanding the purpose of maps. A fundamental requirement in using maps for landscape study is the need to take into account the purpose for which any given map was made. So there are, ad, there are admiralty maps. Admiralty maps are meant to show the contours of the fathoms of the sea, so whatever. But admiralty maps actually show, you know, buildings within the landscape, right? Um, or normal set land ordnance survey maps are meant to show the stuff on the land but not the stuff in the sea. So that's what we mean by purpose of a map. And if we want to be really 
childlike. The purpose of a treasure map is to show you where, where the treasure is. And it's not going to show you everything. The kind of information which a field worker requires may not be the kind of information which a per person who made the map chose to put in it. So what I need to do is show you three maps. This is a map of the Priory grounds at Stoneley Priory in Cambridgeshire. So um, this map itself, let me get my dates right. This map itself was created in 1764. This was created in 1769. And this was created by an archaeological survey. Now, um, so all of these are of the same area. They are all of the same area. Um, but the only thing all these maps have in common are uh, this boundary. Look at that boundary there. So let's, uh, let's move again. There's that boundary. Everything is gone. If you want to go back, the Priory existed before this map in 1769 was made. And also, the Priory also existed before the map was made in 1764. So if you want to move that arrow again, so that, um, do, 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 yes, that's right, that arrow there, that's there. So the only thing these maps have in common, and I think I've got that right. Can I just double check that one a minute? I've got maps in front of me. Why don't I check my own maps, you silly bugger? Um, right, hang on. I got something wrong there. Right. I've just made an error. So let's just get rid of that. Yep. The, uh, the thing that all these maps have in common is, in fact, this boundary. Right? But they don't have anything else in common. However, there is one interesting thing that compares with uh, the map of... Um, 1764 and the modern survey map and I will show you the map of 1764 shows this and then we go that earthworks is missing on the map of 1769 it, but it's still there we know it's still there because when this was surveyed a few years ago there it is again. Yeah. So are we, are we getting what I'm actually getting at? Right? Because... So let's get rid of that again. See if I can make sense of this all for all of you. So try and get as much as we can out of this lecture today. So this being drawn in 1764, it marks the place of the Priory. Um, and it shows, uh, it shows some ponds so there are some so the fish ponds that are actually shown uh originally is this this and this okay there you go um and these belong to a monastery but there's no remains of the monastery showing even though the monastery is there the surveyor didn't mark it because it was irrelevant to the survey it was just a load of humps and bumps so in 1764, they were not shown. So on the later map, here we go, of 1769, this doesn't even show the ponds, let alone the priory. But the words priory are still there. So the 1769 map, for reference, a future researcher will know there's a priory there only from the words, the priory, not actually in relation to what is actually on the site, even still. It simply was not the purpose of the surveyor who made the second map to show any details of any significance other than the boundaries. His only role was to show the boundaries, to show people the ownership of the land and not what was actually there. So when we get to the third drawing, an archaeological one shows the actual site as it is today. There are faint earthworks where the priory buildings were. So here we go. So you can actually see these earthworks. It's great, isn't it? The, the, the archaeological one. So if I want to read this, okay, let's read this map. So that there is a wall. Because if you, hang on, if we, if we make this a little bit more easier for you guys, 
uh, clear that. Let's sort of zoom in on that a bit more. So we can do this. There you go. Nice. Much better, isn't it? Uh, so let's find the walls. Let's go for the wall hugging. Let's find the walls. So we know that this is a wall. And why? Because if you look at the houches, the, the, the houches, the tapering end of the houcher where the bank drops off is, is lower than where the top of the triangle is. So this indicates, we can actually draw a full plan actually. So here we go, look at that there. And we've got another building wall there. We've got another building wall there. We're starting to understand what the Priory looked like. Look at that there. Here we go. So by looking at these Houcher lines, you can get an idea what the Priory site once looked like. And these, these were actually in existence when the site was surveyed in 1764. But the surveyor chose not to put these on the map. But we now survey these on the map in the modern day and age. Whoever's got that bleeping, turn your mic off. So here we go. It's probably going to be Bill. It's one of his girlfriends. <laughs> now, it would be nice to get to um, this map now. Okay, so... We've mentioned interpretation, okay? And I've got to get my notes right, okay? I've just um, lost my bit. So we are now gonna go to, so in other words, what we've seen by looking at maps, one minute there's something on the map. So you've got a bill, you've got an earthwork on a map from the 1700s. It's not on a map in the 1800s but it reappears on the map in the 1900s, simply because those map A, B, and C have different reasons why they were created. So meaning on map B, you didn't need anything on the map other than the field boundaries. So this is a very interesting one. Let's go to an antiquarian map. So if we lay this on its side, Let's take it the other way. Bingo. Now, what I'm interested in is this here. You know these maps, don't you, Bill? These old antiquarian maps, they're lovely. They're really detailed. Really massive. The oldest ones I've got. We yeah, the oldest ones I've got. Are the Yates maps of 1799? I've got those. But they are not as detailed as this, but... No, they're not. They're, they're, very, they're not detailed at all, actually. But it don't, you do see mountains and bits and pieces on it. Anyway, back to this, okay? Back to what we're looking at. Now, this itself, let me get my stuff in front of me, okay? This itself is from Borough Hill in Daventry, Northamptonshire. And this shows, this here shows George Barker's history and antiquities of the county of Northamptonshire in 1822. This shows a specific site. And he went into great detail. And what is the great detail that George Barker, the antiquarian, went into in regards to this hill? Let's look at what he found. So he shows an enormous earthwork, a massive earthwork. Today it doesn't look as impressive as an earthwork as he's showing in, in what did, was the date we had? Hang on a minute. I've just lost my date. This was being drawn in the early 1800s. Okay, so he's really detailed the beginning of the 1800s. He's showing a really impressive site. Now, what he also shows is an alignment of barrows in the middle. Look at those barrows. They're lovely, aren't they? And look, these, these are classed as Roman barrows. They, they did have barrows in the Roman period. So these are classed as Roman barrows. These much bigger barrows, always in the past, the, the older a barrow is, the bigger they are. Okay? So these are not Roman. These are probably going to be Bronze Age. So he recorded a significant landscape 
200 years ago. <clears throat> and obviously the outlines of the fort itself. But unfortunately, unfortunately, as things changed, as time went by, so obviously what we've got here, we've got this part of the site as well. And if we want to compare what's going on, and I'm painfully aware of time. I wish that we had two hours tonight, actually, but we don't. Uh, if, we, if we go on to this, if you want to compare the two maps. So this is this, this map itself. Um, so this is the landscape in, seven, in 1822. So we've got a date there. So this is the landscape as it's sort of showing about, um, um, probably showing about um, 1900, late 1800s, 1900s. So everything in the landscape has changed. What's changed in the landscape? Let's do a bit of a comparison. In basically 100 odd years, these Roman these Roman barrows have gone. They've gone. They're not there. This is how important these antiquarian maps are. They're gone. Detailed antiquarian maps are worth their weight in gold. They're gone. So within 100 years, they've disappeared. What's also changed within the landscape is that they put a building in here. And also, the field boundaries have completely changed. The only, real, the only field boundary that really equates is sort of this one. And that's probably a bit dodgy right also you would think a hundred years later the banks and ditches over here would still be, exist they are gone they are completely erased from the landscape very very strange that but what is also very strange is in 1822 what we do find is this area is quite organized. What's going on a hundred odd years later? What are these? Did he miss these? And I say he didn't miss them at all. These are obviously uh, fairly modern or they, they've, it's been an archaeological excavation there and they've been revealed and we've seen them. So we've got some great changes within the landscape of a, co a, a pace of a hundred years where you had lots of stuff on a landscape. Now there's very, very little. And also, that barrow there, it's not even on the map anymore. Now, this barrow is sort of on the map, but it's not really clear. So this is the importance and relevance um, of, of seeing accuracy with maps in the past and having accuracy with maps today. But it doesn't necessarily mean that everything's going to be recorded on maps. And next week, we're going to look at some really good comparison stuff. Um, and I'm just going to basically um, tempt you with a bit of that. Um, and, um, and what I'm going to do as well, um, I'm going to email you. Um, I'm going to email you some maps. Um, some of the maps I was going to do today, I'm going to email you them. And that's going to be your homework to look at them. So when we actually do the next bit of the mapping, you'll be able to understand more of what we're looking at. So get yourself familiar. Being familiar with, with a map is very important. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this last bit today. Um, and then we will go on to uh, something I want to show you with what we're doing next week. And then I want to look at your maps. Um, I've told you what the homework's going to be. I'm going to send you uh, some some maps in this series that I was we were going to do today, but we're not. I want you to look at them, um, and and obviously we got a, a, a cornucopia to do next week. So so let's let's stop faffing about with with these the, this complicated stuff. So here we go. This final one is a map of Thrupp End in uh, Bedfordshire. And shows on an early ordnance survey map. Um, so what you've got the um, the the maps themselves. Um, you've got an earlier ordnance survey map, uh, which is if I get this right, uh, this is the earlier ordnance survey map. Uh, and what you then have is a later map with the archaeology on it. So even the ordnance survey, renowned for its accuracy cannot be entirely relied upon to give the whole picture in relation to archaeological sites carefully shown on its maps. 
This is because it's, it is not priority or policy to show earthworks which are less than 0.5 meters high. So in other words, what we're talking about is it, on, the modern, on the modern survey, what you can see is a bank here, which isn't shown on the earlier on the survey map, but it's shown on the later on the survey map. So that means that this bank is under 0.5 meters and wasn't originally recorded on this map. Also, look at, let's just clear that and let's get a little bit more into this. This earlier map here doesn't show these earthworks. They're not on this earlier map, they're gone, they're not there. And also look at this feature here, it's not, it's there. So this is the problem with, with this level of survey. Um, and also what we, the, the idea of surveying maps for the London survey is to make a landscape more straightforward to read. So, you know, the average person is not going to be interested in minor humps and bumps in a field. They want to know what their bloody field looks like. They want to know the area of their field. They want to know some, some drainage ditches, but they don't need any other detail. This is what, how the Ordnance Survey thinks. Um, and this is why we look at these maps. They don't show everything on these maps. They show the detail that the Ordnance Survey feels that you need to know. Right? Not everything that you have to know as an archaeologist. These weren't done for archaeologists. These were done for everyone. Not everyone's an archaeologist. So figure the, the top image shows what appears to be a, a fairly small earthworks, a fairly small site. But field survey in the modern period shows that the so-called moated sites are slightly more complicated than the ordnance survey indicates. But more importantly, to the south of them was a settlement. So, you know, <laughs> this is the thing. Um, on the other survey map, you might think there's a manor house, there's no village, right? Now we know there's a village because the earthworks are only slight. So, the import importantly, to the south of them was a settlement with its pro properties marked off from each other by ditches. The whole cutting through earlier ridge and furrow, a significant observation. Um, so in other words, what we've got um, by studying the landscape from earlier maps, you might hope to learn more by, by looking at the modern landscape or in the other map that we've seen from 1822, you can learn from a map things that are no longer on a modern map. So it goes in roundabouts. So what I want to do is actually zoom in on this and I want to all give you a little bit of time because uh, this will have been a long day for some of us. So that's what the modern landscape looks like. So we've got a medieval village. All of this is absent on the earlier map. The archaeologists are showing uh, what a medieval pottery scatters. Um, you can see that um, these here are ditches because the raised area is... On, on the side and the um, the narrow line is in the middle. So raised area on the side, narrow line in the middle. These are ditches. So this would indicate a manor house and all of these ditches here indicate partitions between village plots alongside a sunken medieval lane. And what I said for you to be um, a, a Keep it back, Bill, earlier on. That there is the a wonderful um, Holloway. Holloway or Medieval Lane. Sorry, Michelle's come back with a, with a mask on her face, and I'm thinking why. So, so what I, it would be great to look at some more of these maps in the future. And what I'd like to do is actually, you know, I could do mapping for weeks. I, I wasn't going to do mapping all next week, but we will do it more again because there's a few more things we need to learn so what i'm going to do is we will whilst i'm whilst i'm going through all your maps everyone's only got three minutes and they've got to ask me about the lecture as well in those three minutes right that's all we're going to have everyone's going to be on a stopwatch and we've got um I, I, there's there's five of you tonight or i think so six 
Uh, so we haven't got a lot of time to actually three minutes might be too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that now. Uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to be looking at next week. It's known. It's called the National Library of Scotland Map Insight, and you can look at ordnance survey maps. Okay, and you can compare alongside maps from the modern age with maps from the from the past. So this is what we're going to do next week. Uh, so it's a modern ordnance survey map alongside um, an old map. And it's a really good exercise. That's what we'll be doing. And it's a really exciting exercise to do next week. And what I'm going to do is so you can muck around with this, I will send you an email link as well as this recorded lecture and some images. It will take me a little bit of time to put it together tomorrow, but it'll still be fresh. So that's what we're doing next week. The map comparison. We know what we're doing. And what I would like to do is I would like to give all of you a bit of stage. So let me go back to here. So everybody, the way this is going to work now is I'm going to mute everybody. Okay, and I'm going to start with Bill. And Bill okay. is going to be the speaker. Um, there we are. So, so Bill, what I'm going to say quickly is I want you to um, I want you to ask any questions about the lecture at the end of this little exercise. You haven't got long. I want you to tell us, give you an overview of the number of sites that you found on your map, what the map is, um, okay. and it's over to you for two minutes. Go for it. Okay, this is um, OL Ranger map um, 35. Uh, the Gwine Valley, which is a few miles southeast uh, of, of um, Fishguard. It covers an area of roughly five by three, and I can just skim across it quickly and pick out the archaeological items of, of interest. So here we go at random. I've got a fort. I've got a fort. I've got a standing stone. I've got a standing stone. I've got a Castell Mile. I've got a settlement. I've got... Going across, going across, going across, across, right, going down a bit. I've got, da, 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 da. what have I got? Uh, springs. I've got a moat. I've got, bear with me, bear with me. I'm going across, across, a standing stone. I've got a burial chamber. I've got a standing stone. I've got another burial chamber. I've got, a moat. I've got another moat. I've got a well. I've got a burial chamber. These are all different. Church remains of. So, so Bill, um, yeah. what, what I'd like you to another, do. Another what, well. What I'd like you to do, Bill, is give me an overall. Uh, um, did, did you did you get an overall number of how many castles and how many tumulus are on that map? No, I'm counting them now. I, I guess in an area about five by three, I guess I'm looking at something like 20 plus. 20, right, so what 20, I'd like, Bill, what I'd like you to do as, as your extra homework for next week, right? That sounds like a massive yeah. interesting map. I want you to tell Again. us exactly how many castles are on the map, how many tumulus okay. are on the map. I want you to, everything in italics, Tell us exactly how many forts are on the map. I want us to know okay. how detailed that area is. And, and that, that, that needs to be done for next week. Anything you'd like to ask about the lecture, Bill? No, no not really. But it's only by studying the Ordnance Survey maps, which are the best in the world, as you say, you can pick up so much information, which, uh, in fact, encourages you to go out there and actually find them, because you know they're on the map or were on the map and see what's there. And if you like walking, rambling on archaeology, a wonderful combination, really are. Full Thank stop. You. Thank you very much for that, Bill. So what we're going to do, if you could all keep it like that, really nice and concise, um, what I'm going to do is now ask um, Pam. Did you, did you, I know you were limited with what you had, but did you come up with anything? Anything you want to say about the lecture? Anything about the map you looked at? Give it to us. Right, the map I looked at, um, it's different. It's you know, one, one 
to one nine no 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 do you want I've to show us on the Roman screen road. show us the map on the screen quickly can you do that um but no not easily no it doesn't really do ah, it's it's that. a it's a good um, old atlas you know yeah well carry on go for it what did, yes. did you what did I've you find from the map road oh which is 837 and that goes up into Yeovil. Um, you have got sites, one is a country park, and one is other sites of interest, which is marked as a spa. That's as far as I can go on that one, because I didn't do an awful lot. Going back to your lecture, on your mat, if people have got tithed areas for plowing and growing things, shouldn't there be a tithed barn? To go with that that's what i would be looking for on that one um the other well, can, one I, can I just can i just jump in there the ordnance survey is only showing yep. you what is left yep. it doesn't necessarily mean to say that yep. things weren't in the landscape it's only showing you what is left so yes yeah i'd be looking for that if if i had the map that's what i would be looking for that, um go, go, go on just, to the just other quickly. one where you've got three dates high and ferry yeah um I don't know if you can bring that up. I don't think you can, can you? Um, hi, hi, I'm, I am Ferris. Um, we, we'll, we'll have a quick look at this. We are a bit limited for time, so I'm just going to get that. Uh, yeah, I'm only going to say something quickly. Uh, right, I've just gone past it. Um, That's that. Go for it. Right. Here, I'm going to do it in my cursor. You've got a lot of buildings there, which is also a lot of buildings there. And it's also shown here. So I'm guessing, and I would say they are important because they're all sort of still standing. And I'm only guessing. Ah, only right. You, you talk, you're talking about all the buildings. Yeah. So it's, it's more, there's more relevant yeah. stuff on there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Brilliant. So because it's carried over over the years, I would say that's something, and I don't know what. Here, um, this is regarded as a church. Again, I'm guessing I would say an abbey. And the reason why I say that is because of fish ponds. And if they've got fish ponds, and again, rabbit warrens, then people would be self-sufficient. Also, the dovecot goes with that. Um, so, and I so would say I... that monks are the people that are self-sufficient. So can I stop you there? What, we, what you're saying is yeah. it might not be a castle at all. It might be all a monastic, monastic range. Yeah, I think so. I well, think. and why not? Who's to say the castle was there? I, do you know what? That is brilliant question of really maps. Thinking. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. that's brilliant. So what we're going to do now, um, what, what we're going to do, we, 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 need to, we, we need to try and get everybody done. So... Um, uh, we've we've done Pam and um, Pam and Bill. Um, I want to do Margaret next. Give it to us, Margaret. Go on, Margaret. Tell us what you've got. <coughs> I'm unmuting you. You're still muted. Sorry, I was waiting for that. But <laughs> I did the White, the White Valley and the Forest of Dean, which includes Chalik. Just, just for my interest. Now there's, wait a minute, let me see where I've written it down. There's a lot of named castles, which is 10, yes, 10, ten named castles, you know, the, the well-known uh, named castles, plus one that's not got a name. I've got Office Dyke. I've got two named chapels and the remains of two that aren't named. There's Tinton Abbey, of course. Then I've got two motts, two mot, uh, four mutton baileys, four moats, uh, two fish ponds, uh, a manor house, the remains of, um, three re, can't read my own writing, restored crosses, um, one remains of a cross and two that are just marked cross. Ten forts, one tumuli, six tumuluses, um, three cairns, a settlement, Arthur's caves, um, about four farms that are in italics but are named, so I assume they're old 
you know, that they're, they're really ancient farms, but probably still in use as a farm. Uh, three wells, a settlement, uh, remains of some ironworks and some uh, some some ironworks that are still working, I think. A medieval village that's not Turlock, and um, two named chapels. One of them is the one that's in the middle of the seven. Is it Twigs or somebody like that? I can't can't pronounce his name. And two chapel remains plus a burial chamber. That, that sounds exactly what I wanted. That's what I want, Bill. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted. And B Bill did really, you know, we've all, we're all looking at these maps and getting into them. And Pam even found a Roman road that was great. This is the type of thing we need. Can you just show up the map on the screen, please? Yes. J just. Where's me? Where's me? In the middle. There we are. Yes. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to ask about the lecture? Your last chance? Um, no, the only thing is how do you know with these that are, are not on the, on the, if, if the, if the um, building or whatever ever is not marked on the map, how do you know it's not been knocked down? And you uh, something? So if it's not marked on the map, no, hang on. Oh, all right, so you're saying if it's marked on the map, how do you know it's not been knocked down? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so say you've got two maps, one an old map with a building on it and another map without the building. How do you know that it's it's just not been named, you know, just not been put there or that, or that it's been knocked down? Well, actually, there's loads of answers to that. Um, we get things on maps that are not even there. Um, it, 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 you know that example where the guy put the mound on, he was a surveyor and, he, and whatever. Yeah. Um, it's stuff, you know, people... It, it's like um, it's it's like we get the word um, cross marked on the map, but there's not a cross there anymore. There was a cross in the past. People say there was a cross there. They 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 think there was a cross there, but there's not a cross there now. Uh, yeah. There are we, me and me and Richard who, who will be joining us next week actually because this would have been perfect for him tonight. Uh, um, we we get lots of these problems when we're looking when we're researching about the Barry area. We've got three standing stones in the Barry area on maps. They're not even there anymore. So yeah, that that if that answer that answers your question, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah thank you. Good. Okay. Oh, um, Trellix Well is marked, but there's no nothing whatsoever about the the village, you know, the medieval village. And, and that's the point that they, they've got no there's. There's nothing in law to say that these things have to go on maps and stuff, you know, it doesn't. Um, um, Anne, Anne says that she's got to go. Um, right, so Anne, we'll do you now. Unmute yourself, quick. Now. Oh, just, uh, yeah, um, just um, confused because you said to us only write the italics down. So I couldn't understand why, but I only wrote the italics. Yeah, italics no, that's what I asked. That's fine. Go for it. What, so what so did you... The, show us the... Right. Show us the map. Quickly, show us the map that you've used and what you found. Go for it. It's the Cotswolds. The Cotswolds. Uh, OL45. And uh, it's 1.25. Go on, do, do yeah. your spiel, because I know you've got to go, yeah. so go for it. So it was full of, um, you know, earthworks, uh, Toddington House, Manor House, Grange, Sudley Castle, Medieval Village, uh, Medieval Village, Manor House, um, and then there was uh, a Grange, Inner Park Wall, Salt Way, St. Kennel's Well, um, Fish Ponds, Large Barrow, Long Barrow, Bella Snap, which we tried to find when we were in the Cotswolds and we couldn't. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was just a, an area, just the longitude of, of, of a line, you know, about five inches by 12, uh, 20, something like that. No, that sounds but absolutely no... fascinating. Did did you actually learn something from it though? That that's the point. There's no point. There's no point yeah, doing. Well, well, yeah. 
I, I, I just learned that there was um, more there than I thought there was. <laughs> okay. And there was lots of stuff that you don't see when you go to the Cotswolds. The stuff is all, uh, you yeah. know, um, hype. But there's small places that are like deserted medieval villages and things like that, you know. Thank, yeah. thank, so, thank you for that, Anne. I, I know you said you've got to go. Anything you want to say quickly? Uh, oh, just, um, no, that's, that's fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you for yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. No, that was really I'll good. Next, I'll see you next lesson then. See you next lesson, Anne. So thank you for that, Anne. So what, what I'm going to ask now is, Ellen, go on. Give us your spiel quick. And... Right, I've got no questions about tonight. Um, I use the OS Explorer um, 1 in 25,151 number map. Bingo. Cardiff, um, it covers that sort of area there. And you said you didn't have to do the whole map, so I did the half the eastern sheet. So I got quite a, quite a lot of things I wasn't expecting. Altogether, there were 74 items um and they were new home one castles and re um remnants seven a beacon one four forts three tumuli one taff's well one burial chamber lesser garth cave two castle corks um one at ton Gwynlice and one sort of northeast of stalling down um Eight earthworks, one homestead, one burnt mound, one church, Kai Castle one, one mot, M-O-T-T-E, three enclosures, one old bishop's palace, one mot, M-O-T-T-E, two wells, one priory site, Fanon Dilo one, one mound, one bridge, one agair, two standing stones, two long cairns, Lantrithid Place, Fenon Devrig, One Moat, and One Dinis Powers. And so there are a few things that I'd not noticed before in terms of okay. um, things they point out. So and why is Moat M-O-T-T-E and M-O-T-T? Well, actually, do you know what? You've just reminded me. I need to go through some of the terms on the maps, and that's exactly what we're doing next week. So keep that till next week. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. And so if there's nothing you want to uh, mention, Ellen, this is everyone's, this is really working well. Everyone's doing what, what I wanted. So that's good. And then finally, thank you for that, Ellen. Um, uh, whilst we're going over to Ellen and she's unmuting, don't forget the walk next week um, at, at, at uh, Dinner's Powers at 11 o'clock. It's an educational walk, meeting at the church, so you're allowed to travel. Right, Jessica, go for it. Last, well, last one, Jess. Um, I just done the Cornwall map that you gave me, and in this little square alone is about over 50, and I've had things like, um, 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 I've had an enclosure, that I think there was one enclosure out of this whole thing, there was a lot of settlements, which I didn't put, like, I didn't write down how many, and a lot of hut circles as well, as well as, um, standing stones, and, um, Stone circles and nine maidens, etc. <laughs> yeah, there, there were a few maidens, weren't there? Yeah, there were. Um, no, so so re really, um, if you anything you else you want to say, Jess, before I um, I, I I get to the end. No, it was really informative. Liked it. I I I, I gotta be honest with you. Uh, that that was there was a lot in that tonight and. Uh, and I do apologise for going over, but um, we needed to go over because we all needed to make a contribution, uh, do our bit tonight. So that really worked, and Anne and, and, and everything. So what I'm going to say, I will reiterate. So next week, uh, be, tomorrow I will send you an email with some maps to look at, which will be for next week. Um, the, you'll have also, um, I will email the link of that site I showed you. Um, and also, um, we'll have the uh, YouTube video of this out there as well. And next week, we'll be looking a little bit about this week. Uh, we'll be looking at that map exercise online, looking at an area. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, I'll be letting you know what these different things on the maps are. And I blooming hope we get through it next week. Um, but that's great. So I've really enjoyed this tonight. Um, 
if anyone wants to say anything else, they, they need to say so now. Um, I've really enjoyed that tonight, and I'm going to, if nobody's got anything else to say, forever hold their peace. Um, one, last, one last comment from the last 10 minutes. It just shows the colossal amount of archaeology crammed into the landscape of this country. 100%, uh, yeah, tick. What were you going to say, Margaret? I, have you got my email address? Um, yes, I do. And d tell me. You didn't send me a link for tonight. I, I, I linked in on, the, on John's. Right, obviously we got the wrong email. Um, I tell you what, um, I need to get this off record and you stay behind and I will get it off record and you can read it out okay. to me. So if everyone, everyone's done tonight, thank you very much, Bill, Pam, Ellen, Jess, John. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Yeah, Deeth, Deeth, Deeth Mawrth, Deeth Thleen, Deeth Merca, Deeth Gwenna, Deeth Yann. Deeth Thleen. Yeah. Okay, Nasta Pam, bye. Uh, so we'll remove Pam, that's good. I'm going to remove Bill. I've got to keep with them, um, and what we'll do, we'll stop the recording.